Hi, welcome back to educator.com. This is the lesson on viruses. So some virus basics, what are these things? And we're not talking about the computer kind. Uh, the computer kind is named after the actual biological virus. They are non-living structures that have the potential to harm every other life form on Earth. Now, I don't want you to think that um, one single virus, like one type of virus, can infect everything on its own. That's not what I mean. I mean that any life form you can think of, bacteria, fungus, amoebas, plants, any animal, there is a virus that can invade its body and potentially kill it. Um, and that's amazing to think about, that viruses being so tiny uh, can be so harmful. And they are considered non-living. Um, why? You know, if we're talking about them in biology and, and they're able to invade and, and infect living beings, what makes them not alive? Well, a couple main reasons. They cannot metabolize nutrients. So when you think of every single other life form, it's made of cells. Um, a virus technically is not made of cells. And because of that, because it doesn't have those cellular parts like ribosomes and other particular enzymes to um, actually break down nutrients to get energy, we can't consider it technically alive uh, because it doesn't have the ability to do that. It actually takes advantage of the host's ability to do that so that it can make more copies of itself. And along with that, it can't replicate without a host. Um, there actually are some, some living parasites that this is true of as well. There are some parasites that have to be in an animal body to reproduce, and then they leave that animal body, invade another animal, and so on. Uh, but these two reasons combined are, are a major part of why viruses are not in the taxonomic groups. Um, typically, they're not considered alive. Um, some scientists don't necessarily agree with that. Um, as time goes on and, and they're studied more, uh, perhaps the definition of what life is may be adjusted to include viruses. But currently, when you look in most biology textbooks or, or resources, viruses are not considered living. So what are they structurally? They're made of nucleic acids, remember DNA or RNA, wrapped in a protein coat, and that's known as a capsid. So here you're seeing uh, a computer-generated image of a virus. Um, all of this blue-green stuff that's the capsid, that's the protein, and these are little, um, they're known as antigens, little protein units sticking out of it. And inside, you have either DNA or RNA. So viruses are either DNA viruses or RNA viruses, and that's the bare minimum to be a virus, is this protein coat or um, wrapping around genetic information. Um, viruses can have other tools. They can have an additional membrane on top of their capsid. They sometimes have little enzymes inside of them. But you do not see cellular parts, you do not see ribosomes, you do not see organelles. Um, and they're usually very, very tiny compared to even a bacterial cell. Most viruses are 5 to 300 nanometers wide. Now a nanometer is a billionth of a meter. Billionth! That means in, in one meter, there is one billion nanometers. Um, typically, with measuring cells that are alive and much bigger, you're going to use the micrometer. Um, and a micrometer is a millionth of a meter. So in, in one nanometer, there are a thousand of these uh, micrometers. It's a very huge size difference. And that's actually a good distinction to make because um, many viruses, if you laid them end to end to end, um, a thousand of them across could fit in one cell. Um, so very uh, huge difference in the ratio of sizes from, from the average cell and the virus that would invade that cell and kick its butt. Uh, speaking of how many viruses you can fit in a space, uh, I've seen this amazing fact that in the average period at the end of a sentence, you could fit 10,000 cold viruses side by side in that period. So incredibly tiny.